Ah, uh, yes. Valentine's Day. The perfect time to talk about ships. No, not these kind of ships. Relationships. So I'll be ranking some of Genshin Impact's popular ships as of 4.4, whether it be romantic, platonic, or familial, and I'll try to do it in one sentence. Without further ado, let's get into it. E-tier. She literally tried to kill her. This ship makes Yoimiya look like a teenager and Ito like a grown hobo man, which is disturbing to me. You can't expect a mentor and apprentice trope to work all the time. Even if he's been reborn, he literally killed his family and friends and shipping them still makes me uncomfortable. Would prefer Sino and Ahida, but we don't talk about this ship. <coughs> Guizhong exists. Why are you still shipping them both? Everyone be out here shipping a 20-something man with a 6,000-year-old dragon, yet they get mad when someone ships a 30-something man with a 500-year-old fox lady. People be shipping characters over the tiniest bit of dialogue. Also, another situation where one is a 1,000-year-old dragon. I'm actually surprised to find out this ship's existence and its popularity in another region, but I prefer to see them as a found family for how Nahida treated him. D tier. I didn't expect people would ship them after their argument in the Fontaine Archon quest. Not really my cup of tea because one of them is heavily underage. Why do I get the feeling that either one of them is gonna stab each other in the back? They both have beef with the knights but it's no reason to ship them both. Can't really see them in a couple cause they've only talked together like a few times. Never met in the games, THE OFFICIAL ARTS DON'T COUNT! And yet people still ship them just because they're the last two new leeway characters before Baiju came along. Goofy ass master and butler would not romantically ship them both because one is more or less a decade younger. A one-sided ship where one of them is a sim in secretive, I'll allow it cause technically human adeptus couples are allowed in leeway. I don't like the age difference but they still get along. Hopefully, another one-sided ship where one of them is a simp. Guess who? They're a found family, your honor. A mom and his adoptive son. How could one possibly put them in a romantic relationship? SMH. Won't get along romantically, but has the perfect platonic relationship in the game. Would prefer the other one because I see Nuvalet more as Farina's dad. C tier. I don't really have anything to say about the ship to be honest. Quite surprised to see the existence of these two hetero ships. Would prefer to see them as father and son. A ship from long back then that I just discovered now so again I don't really have any opinion about them. Huh. Never knew this ship existed. Pen Pals. None more, none less. And there are other better ships that include these two. I guess they'd get along as business partners. I don't think they'd get along romantically to be honest, but they'd still be great friends. I also never knew this ship existed, but hmm, I kinda like it. They're just friends. They're also just friends. Goofy wants to add to that. Don't really have an opinion besides they're just friends. Just two warheads hanging out with each other. It's okay, I guess. Not my cup of tea, but it's a good ship. I like the bodyguard trope, but I prefer this to be a platonic ship. Also not really my cup of tea, but you do you. I don't like it, but I don't hate it either. My opinion is kinda neutral on this one. To be honest, I didn't expect this ship. Even if they don't trust each other, people would still ship them anyway. Ito probably almost f Goro while he's in Miss Hina form. A mentor and apprentice trope that actually works this time. I just discovered this ship, so I know nothing of it, other than the fact that it's gonna be good one day. Holy shit, they accidentally read hentai together. Putting Ayulumi and Edge over because Iyaka is simply ruined by the Ether harem and the people who see Ether as a degenerate and Ayaka as a yandere. I guess I've watched too many Owl House too. Ayato is probably the awkward one all because of Ito's hyper enthusiasm. Is that even a word? It works either way whether Skarmush has been reborn or not. I love how Heizo is the sus one while Kazuha is basically dense or oblivious. I don't ship them romantically because Kloran killed his dad but it's happy to see that they're slowly getting along now. Cute! I like that despite their differences, they'd still get along either way. I love the dynamic, but just like a Toyota Supra, it's overrated to the part where it's getting a bit boring. This feels like a one-sided ship because Yoimiya doesn't really have feelings for her, but hmm, I truly love their dynamic as besties. Could have been high B tier or A tier if the community didn't ruin them for me. B tier. Didn't Beto say that they get along like a house on fire? I prefer other ships that include them, but this is a good ship otherwise. Almost forgot about the ship's existence, the fact that their drinking bodies makes up for some sus fanfics. Radiates, I forgive you and I love you energy. The inferior ship to another Albedo hetero ship. They share a spot because they're like big sisters to her. Would prefer to see them with a sibling dynamic because putting them in a romantic relationship feels 
weird to me. The same goes for these two because Lynette literally sees her as a big sister. Axis. Two absolute dorks and I absolutely love them. Before 3.4, this would be D tier, but now I see Venti more as a therapist and a mental support friend rather than a romantic boyfriend. I see them more as sisters to be honest and I'm happy that they influence each other in the games. The textbook definition of first love. Even if it kinda died down, this is my first favorite ship in the game. This is better thanks to the fungus Pokemon event and her hangout event. Before 3.3, this would be E tier for me, but since he's reborn, Mono would probably forget about him and they can start over. Besties. He's literally down bad for the Traveler, what can I say? Pen pals to gal pals, I guess. Doggy likes fish, fish likes doggy. What else can I say? It's cute, but not as cute as the other ships featuring them. Besties, besties, besties. I guess the B and B tier stands for besties. Siblings, you can't change my mind otherwise. That stupid Oni gets on my nerves. I know. I love the fact that she referred to Yanfei as Senpai, a rare pair that me and a friend of mine on Instagram instantly likes. 2.4 Lantern Ride is peak for this ship. Back then, this used to rival another Lumine ship, Albedo was in the rival. I have nothing to say other than the fact that I absolutely love these two, platonically. A tier. Hear me out. Two bisexuals dying for hot men. I love, love, love their dynamic and they deserve more screen time. The most perfect Albedo ship, yet a lot of people bash on them. Could either be the couple that argues a lot or the most sus. Some of us would rather ship her with the Traveler instead of Farina. I choose both. Adorable. Despite being the newest ship in the game, it has gained significant traction and I love it. PLEASE JUST GET ALONG ALREADY! At least Barbara ends up with a man that's not a creep. A ship that I never expected and I just love seeing them together because of that event. Putting Albather an edge over because I love their voice actors. Let's be honest. We never saw this coming, and somehow, we all love it. A cute, jolly rare pair that's often overlooked. This used to be my pick for the second best ship in the game before another one came along. Still, it's quite sad to see his bro for life die. In my opinion, the best bestie ship in the game. Period. It's kinda sad that Bennett's the only one who gets her. Has a special place in my heart, Xiao will forever have feelings for the Traveler. I'd prefer to ship them platonically since I see Tainari as the dad and Sino as the uncle to Kale. Also, I love their voice actors and their interactions on streams. I'm sorry, Sinyun fans, but I just love the dynamic even more, both platonically and romantically. Can't really decide which is better, so these queens will have to share a spot for having the best dynamics in the game. The perfect Traveler ship, especially to those who assume they are 500 years old. The second the best ship in the game, it really feels like Nivellet really cared for her and he was so grieved witnessing her sacrifice. In my opinion, hands down, my pick for the best ship in the game, heartbreaking but amazing backstory, has the best fanbase, and a ship that we can all agree and like on. And I suppose that's everything. Are there any popular ships that I've missed? What's your favorite ship? And what's your least favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for sticking with me till the end. It'd be nice if you could hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already to let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video.